In this video, we're going to take a look at both how to figure out the energy of a photon of light, um, as well as some other equations related to that, and then how we can use those equations to figure out specific energy transitions within the hydrogen atom. So we'll, by the end of this video, we'll be able to take those energy transitions and that line spectra we see in hydrogen and be able to calculate exactly how much energy is in those transitions. So let's get right into it. And we're going to begin with a equation that was derived by uh, Max Planck. And so he proposed that photons carry energy that can be calculated using the equation of energy of a photon is equal to a constant called Planck's constant and multiplied by the frequency of the um, photon. So uh, frequency is generally given in units of hertz or seconds to the negative one and Planck's constant is this value here in joules times seconds. And so when we do this calculation we're calculating energy in the value of joules. All right, so we've got that equation. Reminding ourselves as well from previous science courses, we know that the speed of light is related to both the frequency and the wavelength of light. So if you recall, um, the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, so frequency and wavelength here. And if we rearrange that for frequency, then that's the speed of light, constant value of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and then our wavelength in meters. If we divide that by that, we'll get the frequency. So if we put those two equations together, we can also do some fun calculations here, where we can find the energy of a photon of light, and that's related to Max uh, Planck's constant, the speed of light, and the wavelength of the light. Okay, so let's take a look. How do we use these equations? Well, let's start with a example here. So this example asks us to determine the energy of a photon of red light, and red light is found at around 700 nanometers. So I think the most appropriate equation use, to use here is that energy is hc over... Um, our wavelength. So if we plug in our values, max Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. Speed of light is 3.0 um, times 10 to the 8. And then our wavelength is 700 nanometers. We do have to change that into meters first. So we're dividing by 1 times 10 to the 9 or we're multiplying by times 10 to the 9 here. If we do this calculation, the energy of this particular photon is 2.84 times 10 to the 19 joules. Now, when we're considering sig digs, we don't worry about our constants here. We're just worrying about our wavelength, really. And that's going to dictate the sig digs for this question. So an energy, the energy of a photon of red light gives off 2.84 times 10 to the 19 joules. If for some reason you're asked to put this in kilojoules, you're just going to divide by a thousand. And sometimes you're asked for kilojoules per mole of photon of red light. If that's the case, we're going to multiply by Avogadro's constant, and that will give us kilojoules per mole. So just be careful. Sometimes you are asked for that. Now, we can take... Um, Bohr came up with this equation that relates the energy of an electron in the nth level of a hydrogen atom. Um, and this relationship here is that the energy related to that nth level electron is a constant value, negative k, so it's 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, divided by n squared. So if we had, say, the energy at the first level, then we'd be doing negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18, and we're going to divide that by 1 squared. 
okay, and so on and so forth. Now, really important to note, this equation only works for one electron system, so it only works really for hydrogen, although can uh, work for a helium plus ion or a lithium two plus ion, really anything that just has a single electron. This is the only, um, the only systems that this equation works for. So that being said, uh, really the only calculations you're going to see using this equation are ones related to hydrogen itself. Um, we can calculate the energy emitted from a transition from one level to another by looking at the difference between the two energies. So the transition energy or delta E is going to be the energy of the final minus the energy of the initial. Um, so if we're looking at a transition from say n equals 2 back down to n equals 1, then n equals 1 is our final and n equals 2 is our initial. And so we would just plug these values into this equation and that would give a value for the energy. So looking at an example then, we're asked here to calculate the amount of energy released when an electron moves from the second to the first. So the second is our initial and the first is our final. Now I kind of like to take that equation that I just showed you, the delta E, and I'll take the negative k out of it because then you have negative k for both of those values and it makes this calculation a little bit easier to do. So we got 1 over nf squared minus 1 over and I squared. So let's put in our values here. We got negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18. And then we've got 1 over 1 squared minus 1 over 2 squared. Okay, so those are our initial and our final energy values. Now, if we do this calculation, we're going to get a negative value for our energy. And that's okay. The negative value is just really telling us that energy is emitted. Uh, so it's a good thing if we're going from high to uh, low energy levels because we expect the energy to be emitted because we know it's being emitted as a photon of light. So the value we get here is negative 1.64 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Uh, SIGTIX for this is a little like, I don't know, it's kind of just, there's no better word for it other than squishy. Um, I would keep maybe a couple of decimal places here. I know I'm kind of basing this off of the constant value here, but really they're all constant values. So there's no kind of rhyme or rule or reason for sig digs. So maybe just keeping it to three dec uh, two decimal places that kind of works the best here. All right, um, and so that's that takes part of this part of our question. Now, uh, a second part, let's calculate the wavelength in nanometers of the photon released. Remember, if we want the wavelength, we've got this equation here, hc over our wavelength. If we rearrange, uh, we could do wavelength is hc over energy. Now, that energy value was negative, right? It was negative 1.63 or 64 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Um, when we're putting it in here, this negative sign is really just telling us that energy is emitted. So we're basically taking the absolute value of our energy here because it doesn't make sense to have a negative wavelength. So let's plug in our numbers. Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. We've got our speed of, of light, three times 10 to the eight. And then the energy we got from the last part of our question. And once we do this calculation, we get a lambda of 1.21 times 10 to the negative 7. That's in meters. The question is asking us for the wavelength in nanometers. So we need to multiply this by 1 times 10 to the 9 uh, to give us nanometers, which works out to 121 nanometers. 
Now, we know that anything below 400 nanometers is beyond the visible spectrum. It's actually in the UV spectrum uh, range. So this is not in the visible end of the spectrum. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because we know that transitions back down to N equals 1. Uh, are ones that go into the UV range. So uh, makes sense in terms of the series of transitions that we know for hydrogen. That's it then for this video. Let's move on to our next task.